Southern Mississippi's Golden Eagles travel to San Antonio to take on the Roadrunners of UTSA. The Golden Eagles get ready for homecoming against the UTEP Miners all today on Southern Miss Sports Today with Jay Hobson. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Southern Miss Sports Today with Coach Jay Hobson presented by Bank Corp South. Golden Eagles just returning earlier in the week from a trip out to San Antonio, Texas, where they took on the UTSA Roadrunners in the Alamo Dome and the Golden Eagles getting out of there with a victory over the Roadrunners on Saturday night. And the hop uh, again, uh, a good ball game for the Golden Eagles. Uh, maybe a few things early on that kind of kept you from getting into gear. But once you guys got it going, uh, really got going well on offense and yeah, defense. I, I thought we played well, John. I thought we, you know, we had a big drive. Uh, Starting off the game, had a had a you know we certainly had an unfortunate uh, turnover there on that second drive, but I thought offensively we came out and really established a run game well. I felt like defensively we played hard all night. Uh, again, it was a we knew it'd be a 60-minute ball game. We we knew what type of football team San Antonio had, but uh, our guys kept fighting. Uh, we made a lot of plays offensively. I felt like defensively we had some difference maker plays. The intercession by Curtis was a huge huge play, but. I felt like in Cornell at the end, but I felt like we, uh, I thought we played hard. You talked about, though, the interception. Uh, you're down 13-7 at halftime, and looks like they're getting ready to drive down maybe to get another touchdown and really put some distance between themselves and the Golden Eagles. But Curtis Michael intercepts one in the, in the end zone, brings it back to just over midfield, and right. it really, in, in hindsight, really kind of turned the momentum of the game around. It did. We had a good drive coming out of the second half. We got down and actually missed the field goal, and then they got the ball and put together a good drive on their first possession and they were getting down into the red zone and, and uh, Curtis makes a big play, uh, runs it back to their side of the field and then we were able to, to, to capitalize and take the lead. But I thought that was a big, big change in the game and uh, again, just a huge play. Another big one, you had Keon Howard as a starting quarterback. Quadrick Griggs battled, battling a little hand injury there. But there, after that interception, uh, Keon lays one perfectly into the corner of the end yeah. zone to Corey Robertson. Yeah. Then the next possession, the fleet Quest. flicker gets you another one, and, and all of a sudden you're in control of the ball. Game. Yeah, I, I thought uh, Key had some nice throws. I, I thought, uh, again, a, a great rouse by Corey. Great catch. Corey had a couple of outstanding catches uh, Saturday. But I thought, again, good precision and execution in the passing game. So uh, big plays. And uh, I felt like we had that little run with a couple of nice plays. And then Edo comes back and has what y'all told me after the game, the longest run in school history. But uh, I thought we, we put together some nice explosive plays back to back. When you start talking about Edo Smith, you start to run out of uh, you know words to describe him. I mean, he's, it's amazing what he does. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody who sits back there and kind of reads things and then just explodes down yeah, the field. Yeah, he, he, he's in, you know, what can we say that we hadn't already said? Edo's a, a, just a dynamic football player. He's a guy that, uh, again, sees the field extremely well. He's a patient runner. Uh, and it, it, to me, he's an all-around back. He can do it all. He can catch, he can block, he can run. You know, he's a guy that it makes explosive play after explosive play. But uh, the great thing I think we have is that we've proven, I think this whole season, is we have other guys too that can make explosive plays. So it uh, certainly helps him, complements him. But uh, again, what a big night he had. You mentioned the, the defense. You were playing against the UTSA offense. It's really explosive. Dalton Sturm, their quarterback, really does a good job of getting the ball in the hands of the right guys. But, right. but I thought for the most part, you did a really good job of kind of keeping them under control. We did. I thought we played well. I think they we hit a little spurt there toward the end in the fourth quarter where they had a couple couple big plays on us. But I felt for the most most part, our guys really uh, played good assignment. We tackled pretty well, too. We had a, some guy. I thought Joe Mez Applewhite had, had a really good football game. I thought he played. And what about Paxton Shrimpster? I've got to mention him. Paxton's a kid that we moved from outside to inside, and he just, you know, he took to that like a duck to water and came out and just made a. I thought he was all over the field, made play after play. So, uh, again, Cornell with the big play there at the end. Curtis with the difference maker player in the third quarter. but. I thought our guys really uh, played hard. Yeah, Cornell Armstrong, one of your veterans on this ball club. Guys played a lot of football and on that two-point conversion uh, mm -hmm. where they could have tied the thing up, yeah. uh, had the big knock knockdown there to, yeah. to save the ball yeah, game. Yeah, great, great technique, great coverage. You give Cornell all the credit there. He did a tremendous job. and. Again, just a huge play. Well, the Golden Eagles with the win over UTSA, and again, as I said, getting ready for the UTEP Myers. We got a couple of features for you, though, before we get back with Coach Hobson. So let's learn a little bit more about Golden Eagle football. I decided to come to Southern Miss 
uh, based off what I've already heard about Southern Miss, uh, the winning traditions, uh, you know, being nasty up front, the defense, and uh, just the the winning it's the winningest program in Mississippi, the winningest uh, program in Mississippi. Uh, my challenge is coming here with just you know just buying in, really. Uh, I always, I guess, I always want to be the one to do my own thing, and uh, you know just. Growing up in there, just, just knowing that, you know, the coaches tell you to do something for a reason. And uh, when you buy in, you know, you start to see that success that the coaches see for you, you know. Being a part of the defense this year, I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it, I can't really explain it, man. I mean, everybody's out there, you know, they, everybody depending on one another. You know, uh, we all, we all living brothers, you know, we will take the field, you know, that's one of coach hop main slogan, you know, living brothers hard to beat. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm not as, I don't talk as much. I try to be like the type of leader, like lead by example, you know. Like I, you know, if I see guys, you know, walking by, I don't finna go work out, be like, hey man, you know, come get a workout with me, let's do this, let's do that. But, you know, I just want people to see what I'm doing and, you know, what what's happening from me doing what I'm doing so they'll be motivated to do it, you know, so. When I was like in a third grade, I had got hit by a lawnmower, you know, I got ran over, but, uh, you know, I never, I never let that affect me, none of my life. I mean, when I got out of the hospital, I was, the first thing I was asking my grandma, you know, I might go be able to play again, you know. And uh, she kept me in church, you know, growing up. And that one thing I always believed in, I believe that, you know, if you believe in God and don't worry about nothing, everything will fall into place. So that's kind of some, something I, you know, stuck with my whole life. I had like, I mean, as far as like, Negative talk, I mean, I had negative talk like back home, you know, people saying that, you know, I probably wouldn't make it with the things that I've been through, but like uh, in high school, I actually sat out a little bit and waited, you know, for the uh, recruiting process to kind of help some of the guys that uh, was getting recruited with me. So, uh, I mean, I could have could have went to Penn State, but I, you know, I told Coach Larry Johnson that it was too far from my hometown, you know, and he, he wanted me, you know, even knowing, you know, my situation. So. Uh, I think it was just meant. I think it was something that meant. I think it was meant for me to come to Southern Miss. I think it was meant for me to go through all the adversities that I, you know I done been through here, to turn me to the man I am today. You know, uh, and I, I think uh, this is the best play for me. One day I, I think I might want to be. Like, I want to stay around football with my career. I think I want to uh, be in the weight room or something like that. I don't want to be like no position coach and then like that, but. I like to work out and I think I can push guys to, uh, to work hard, so you know, I uh, think I'd be a good strength and conditioning coach one day. When, uh, when all this is done, man, I can say that coming to Southern Miss, it, it, uh, it turned me into a man, you know, it showed me that you had to work, you know, uh, showed me how to uh, talk to people, be more social. Uh, it showed me, uh, showed me everything, man, I think I need to know in life and I thank God for allowing me to get here. And that Wildcat formation takes a snap and got wrapped up and dropped for about a half a yard loss as Rod Creighton wrapped him up immediately. Coming into my senior year, you know, uh, we had 20 starters returning. Only people we lost from that 81 team was Danny, Danny Jackson, and we lost uh, uh, Mike Livens and Sammy. Everybody else came, was coming back, you know. So we were real confident at what we were doing. And, you know, at that, at that, at that of course, you know, Coach Collins had left, which was pretty devastating for me personally because of the simple fact I'm like, really? Really? You got the, one of the best teams that ever been put on the field here at Southern Miss and you leaving? You, you really leaving? 
So I was upset about it. You know, I really was. No disrespect to Coach Carmody and Coach Daniels or those guys who come in, but I'm like, we got a good thing going here, and now you're leaving. You're leaving for greener pastures. And then even though Coach Carmody came in, who was a familiar face, we knew what he was about. And then he brought Coach Daniels in, Keith Daniels, um, as a new offensive coordinator, quarterback coach, and everything. And he kind of changed things up a little bit. And, um, and it affected us early on because we kind of took the true triple option. We changed it, all right, to where I wasn't really reading anything. So it didn't take teams long to figure out what we were doing early on. And we had a monster schedule early because we played, I don't know who we played first, but I think we had uh, Ole Miss, uh, Auburn, Florida State. Uh, I think after, after that, I had a conversation with Coach Daniels. I said, Coach, we need to go back to reading the option the way we did last year. I said, it won't be difficult because everybody's here. Everybody, everybody who was here last year is here now. And to Coach Daniels' credit, he said, okay, all right, we'll do that. And then that's when we went on that little run. Uh, I went in six or seven straight games and then going on to Alabama and then going into Alabama as well as we were playing. You know, it was just, it was kind of crazy, you know, coming into Tuscaloosa because, you know, we, we had the NCAA investigation going on and then we, had, we got put on probation. Uh, the little sanctions that they gave us kind of came down that week prior to Alabama. So we knew we weren't going to a bowl game uh, based on that because the team as itself made a decision. All right, I think it was going to be a two-year bowl ban. So we just said, you know what? As, as a group, we decided, all right, we won't go to a bowl game this year. So they're just so the school would just have one year where they can't go to a bowl. So in essence, you know, that was the last big game of the year for us, you know, against Alabama, and everybody was focused. And, and you know, we went in, like I said before, we, when we stepped on the field, we stepped on the field to win. I don't care who you were. And that's, that was our mindset. And uh, and everybody on that team, from a backup all the way to the starters, had that same mindset. And you know, coming into that game, we knew it was a big game because that was Coach Bryant's last year. And of course, you playing Alabama. I don't care what's going on. You playing Alabama, so you want to bring your best. And we, fortunately for us, you know, we did. Uh, uh, beat them and I, I me personally I didn't know anything about the streak I, I didn't I didn't know about it I was just kind of really focused on that particular game just when I found out a lot about a lot about it afterwards you know which was great and um, we finished on a sour note but you know that game in itself uh, beating state again you know those kind of things uh, it was, it was still pretty special. I started off uh, playing football at Georgia Southern, graduated from Georgia Southern in 2006. Uh, played from uh, 2002 to 2006 under uh, Mike Seawalk. Uh, Brian Van Gorder, and then I was hired as a uh, GA shortly afterwards um, under uh, Chris Hatcher. Um, from there, I spent three years as a uh, defensive assistant, um, worked with the secondary, uh, kind of got my foot in the door in that aspect. Uh, um, after the uh, 2010 season, um, he was let go, and uh, I, I moved on. I had met uh, Coach Hobson at, um, at some uh, camps uh, there in Georgia. When he was at Michigan, he was recruiting Georgia. And uh, that's how I kind of um, you know, met him. And I also met Larry Porter along the way and uh, spent two years at University of Memphis as a graduate assistant working on the defensive side. Um, worked for, for Coach Hobson there and then uh, Coach got the uh, job at Alcorn and uh, I was ready to get on the field and uh, I met him, uh, uh, I followed him down to, to Alcorn. Um, I was blessed for uh, four seasons, uh, winning two conference championships and then uh, you know, Coach got the, uh, the job here and. 
Uh, it's been a blessing for me and my family, um, you know, to, to come to, uh, to Southern Miss. And um, I love South Mississippi. It's, uh, it's very similar to South Georgia. It's, uh, it's a football country um, town that, uh, that, that loves their college. Um, I can't say enough, uh, you know, uh, being able to work for Coach Hobson. I think he's the best coach in America, and uh, he's treated me and my family very well. Um, as far as director of uh, player personnel in, in high school relations and, and operations, um, it's it's basically the, the, the catch-all of behind the scenes. Um, in the springtime, um, you know, I was able to take on some more roles in the operations, um, you know, getting buses ready, getting plane flights ready, getting meals ready. Um, in, in the recruiting aspect, I had already uh, done some camps and clinics, but now I was getting ready to do, uh, you know, Junior days as well, but you know golf tournaments, um, you know getting uh, getting information from administration on what their needs are, um, and probably the biggest challenge overall is being the centralized, uh, you know, uh, communication, um, you know, being that center front uh, to all areas as far as marketing, um, as far as the ticket office, Eagle Club. Uh, the players, you know, there's 105 players that I report to, you know, so there's a, there's a bunch of different people and a bunch of information that is coming in and, and it's got to go out. You know, the trainers got to know, you know, schedules, the, the strength staff's got to know uh, academic schedules. So there's a bunch of moving pieces and there's a bunch of communication that's got to get funneled in and funneled back out. So as far as the task wise, that's probably one of the, the, the biggest tasks that I'm, I'm, I'm still working on. And, and, uh, and trying to make sure I get it, um, you know, dot my I's and, and cross my T's and, and making sure everything's taken care of from a player standpoint and from an administration standpoint. As far as coaching, uh, I love to get back on the field. Um, you know, with my role being off the field as far as operations and, and player personnel, um, I do enjoy that aspect. Uh, uh, I guess the whole being a part of of college football and, and having uh, you know the, those day-to-day -day interactions with the kids, uh, I think help you know keep you young, you know keep you energized. And um, there there are different challenges within my job now uh, that 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 you know even drive me even further to you know get back on, on the football field. But um, being a part of something bigger than yourself, uh, having 30,000 people you know come to the Rock and and seeing your your work and, and seeing your brand and and uh, you know that that's what I, I love about I, I love uh, I love seeing the kids I love seeing you know taking um, taking something and molding it into you know what you want as a coach and what you want out of a program and and getting back to you know the nasty bunch and, and getting back to the traditions that Southern Mills was uh, was uh, was built upon and and seeing how coaches you know relate to players and and, and we all pull our, our weight in different roles and. Uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm very blessed to, and, and, and happy to, to be able to be having that role in operations and in, in recruiting. Probably the biggest thing that is, is unique in being at Southern Miss, um, and I guess special, you know, I, I, I'd use the word special, is that it's, it's built around a family atmosphere. Uh, me and my wife, we purchased our first house here. Um, we have our, uh, our, um, our first son on the way. We have two daughters already, and it feels like home. It feels like, uh, it feels like where we grew up and went to school uh, in South Georgia. Um, it feels like um, a place that I could settle down here and spend the rest of my life at.
visiting again with the head coach of the Golden Eagles, Coach Jay Hobson. Again, the Golden Eagles are getting ready to take on the UTEP Miners, the homecoming game at the Rock on Saturday night. Hop, we just uh, finished watching a little video, a little presentation, a feature on Rod Creighton, one of your senior defense alignments, a young man who's you know battled adversity throughout his career, and he's really dedicated himself this year to be the very best football player he can be. Rod's a special story. Uh, I mean, he's a guy that, again, has worked – tremendously hard this offseason this fall has been an outstanding football player for us a lot of people might know of the adversity in life he ever overcome he actually plays with a uh, half a foot you know he's a guy that uh, has, has a prosthesis in there and just you would never know it I mean he's a guy that just battles you know plugs and, and, he, and he's fast he's explosive he's a true uh, true blessing to our program I've loved being around him and just watching the spirit and the energy that he brings to our football team is amazing and, and uh, again he's played lights out the first five weeks of the season and, and he's having a great senior year. Let's talk about the opponent for the Golden Eagles this week. It's the UTEP uh, Miners. They're under new leadership, Mike Price. They brought him back, the former coach, uh, to take over the football program. Uh, but must have paid some dividends. They, they gave Western Kentucky a battle right down to the wire and, and lost just by a single point, 15 to 14. Yeah, had a tough 15. And actually had a chance going in with about two minutes to go to win the ball game. So, uh, you know, we know we've got a good football team coming to town. It's Conference USA play. We know we got to bring our A game every week, and uh, again, they have our utmost respect, and uh, we know it's going to be a battle. Uh, they still have the same two coordinators there. How about offensively? What do they What do they try to do offensively, and what have they been successful doing? Well, they're they're a team that gives you a lot of different uh, personnel groupings. Uh, you know, again, they're very multiple in their play selection. I think their their quarterback uh, has done a good job running their offense. Again. They, they can run it, they can throw it, uh, you know, and we know it. they're a very balanced football team, so we've got to be ready. How about on the defensive side? They've got kind of a, like the Eagles, like kind of a defensive tradition. They've always had some really they're, good defense. They're playing well defensively, they really are. You know, you just watched that, that film last week. I thought they uh, had a really an outstanding game, and they, they, gave, they gave themselves a chance to win the game at the end. So, uh, you know, we know offensively and defensively, you know, we, we understand we've got a really good football team coming into the Rock Saturday night. 
All right, Hop, congratulations on the win last week against uh, UTSA, and let's get another one this weekend. Thanks, Cox. All right, Coach Jay Hobson and the Golden Eagles take on the Miners of UTEP. That's a 6 o'clock ball game at the Right Rock uh, Homecoming on Saturday for the Golden Eagles. Again, they take on the Miners of UTEP. That'll do it. Don't forget Monday nights. We're at Georgia Blue in Hattiesburg for the Golden Eagle Hotline with Coach Jay Hobson. Come on by, visit with us, enjoy a great meal, and we'll talk a little Golden Eagle football. Have a great week, everybody. See you next time, another inside look into Southern Miss football. Been thinking about it since I was a kid. Mom would be so proud. If I could do it for a living. Using my mom's recipes to open up a cupcake shop. For my daughter to go to vet school. Singing karaoke in all 50 states. Captain in my own shrimp boat. Tell us what you dream about. With the right loan or savings plan, we can make it a reality, no matter how crazy. That's right, thank you, thank you very much keeping you within reach of what matters most. We're Bancorp South, and we're right where you are. Bocoma Casino invites you to come experience a Las Vegas-style atmosphere with small-town Southern charm just up the road in Sandersville, Mississippi. You could drive over 70 miles to the coast, but don't risk the road. Bocoma Casino boasts over 700 high-energy slots, plus your favorite table games like blackjack, craps, roulette, and poker. Our 27,000-square-foot casino offers so many ways to win. Come see us at Bocoma Casino. Real winning, real close to home. Sandersville, Mississippi. Play here, win here. Hey Southern Miss fans, it's Toby Barker, mayor of Hattiesburg. Mickey Spagnola once wrote, if you're going to war and you get to choose first, choose Southern Mississippi. Always choose Southern Mississippi. Don't fight Southern Mississippi because no matter how hard you fight, those folks will fight harder. His words capture the character of our institution and our city. We here in Hattiesburg are writing a new story, one where we rise to our challenges with great excitement one where we push our city to reach its potential, and most importantly, one where there's real partnership between the University of Southern Mississippi and the city of Hattiesburg. Southern Miss is vital to our city's success, from the quality of life it provides through athletics and the arts to the talent it cultivates in the classroom. We share a common destiny. Hattiesburg is proud to be Mississippi's college city, and we hope as we go forward, you'll join us in supporting our Golden Eagles this season as they go to the top.